So I'm actually not preaching from any of the three texts in the bulletin today, and the reason for that is all three of the years of the lectionary, we have the exact same readings for Reformation, so you've likely heard that sermon before. Today I'm going to read from you what would be the gospel reading on the 23rd Sunday of Pentecost. It's from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, if you'd like to follow along in your pew Bible. And they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. So ends the reading from Mark chapter 10. What stands out to you when you read this, what stands out to me, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. These words kick off a conversation with Jesus that today as we celebrate the Reformation should bring immense comfort to each and every one of you. And what are largely considered to be the last written words of the great reformer Martin Luther, discovered written on a scrap of paper shortly after he entered glory, we hear the truth echoed in our text that I just read today. These words were written, we are beggars, that is the truth. This truth penned by Luther came to him as a truth from God's Word in texts such as today's text for our Reformation meditation in Mark chapter 10. It echoes a truth that was revealed in God's Word to Martin Luther and the other Reformers that our salvation is not a work we can accomplish, that we are unable to save or heal ourselves of our sinful state. Instead, today, we remember the cry of Bartimaeus because it is, in fact, our cry, the cry of faith from the helpless, the cry of faith from beggars, and so we say with them in faith, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Say that with me together. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. So today, as we celebrate the reformation of the church, we turn to God's Word and meditate on the defining attribute of our relationship with God, His mercy. Most of us, by the grace of God, do not know firsthand what it's like to be blind. Perhaps your vision has dimmed and become less reliable as you have aged, or perhaps, like me, you've needed corrective lenses from a young age. I've been reminded on numerous occasions to be extremely grateful to live in a time and place where corrective lenses are available to me. I'd be blind without them. So despite not knowing fully what it's like to be blind, I'm going to ask you to imagine our text today from the perspective of Bartimaeus. Normally when we read a narrative text, our mind pictures the account. Today instead, I'm asking you to think of this story in terms of the sounds in the story. So I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to listen to me as I read that section of Scripture again keeping in mind we're just listening for the sounds. We're told there's a great crowd around Jesus and His disciples, so imagine the roar of the crowd, the bustle of lots of voices and feet. And out of that roar, we're told that Bartimaeus hears the crowd and noise, and he hears that it's because Jesus is nearby. Out of his darkness, Bartimaeus clings to hope, and urgently cries out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. 
The crowd, irritated by your sudden outburst, rebukes you. Shh, quiet down. Don't be such a bother. Wait your turn. Are all things Bartimaeus might have heard from the crowd. You can't see them, but you can tell they're irritated with your crying out. And you can't let this opportunity pass you up. You've heard about Jesus. You've heard He is from God, and you believe it. You believe that He can help you, so you cry out even louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. This time, all the noise stops. The crowd is quiet, and you don't hear all the footsteps anymore. Why did everyone stop? What is happening, you think? And you hear a voice. Call him. Now footsteps approach you and you hear another voice say, take heart, get up, he is calling you. Me? You spring up and move toward the sound of that first voice and you hear the voice again. What do you want me to do for you? It says, this must be Jesus, you think? So I say, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. The voice speaks again, go your way, your faith has saved you. And as soon as the words left his mouth, the darkness is gone and you can see Jesus, you can see the crowd and his disciples and everything. Open your eyes. It's a little different than what we normally think of in this text, isn't it? Again, it's true for most of us that we aren't fully blind like Bartimaeus. However, we were just as blind as Bartimaeus in a more important way. In the Scriptures in general and in the book of Mark, blindness is not just literal. It is also an allegory for spiritual blindness that accompanies a lack of faith. Those who, don't have put, who have not put their faith in God or faith in the wrong things are blind. They cannot see the truth. A revelation that pulls back the curtain of this blindness lies at the heart of our celebration today at the Reformation. The heart of the Reformation was the rediscovery of the truth revealed in our text. When Luther used the term beggar, he was referring to our spiritual state of sin. The beggar, Luther, was also blind. He could not see the truth of what God's actual response to the plea of the beggar, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Luther's worry as a result of the blindness in the church at the time was that the mercy of God was only granted to those who made an effort to not be beggars. And this led Luther and many others to despair because no matter how hard he tried to not be a beggar before God, a blind beggar he remained a truth that he pens near the end of his life, although now understanding it in a different way. He was missing something crucial. He was blind to something, and as it turned out, something that could only be revealed by God Himself. The revelation of helplessness and, more importantly, the revelation of God's response to our helplessness is what fueled the Reformation we celebrate today. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. This is what Bartimaeus cries out upon hearing that Jesus is near. It is the cry of need and faith. In those few words, our need is fully expressed. Now, condition, no conditions, no specific expectations, just a wholehearted plea for mercy. After all, that's what a beggar is someone helpless and reliant on the grace of others. And as a beggar, what will you do when you hear that Jesus is near? For those gathered here this morning, I know the answer to this question. You expressed the same plea in your confession a few minutes earlier. We also sung about our beggarish state before God in the hymn, From the Depths of Woe I Cry to Thee. We cry out from the depths of woe, an expression of the reality of our being spiritual beggars. And in verse 3 of that hymn, we sang, Therefore my hope is in the Lord, 
and not my own merit. It rests upon His faithful Word. This is the truth revealed in God's Word today. It is the same truth that restores Bartimaeus' physical sight and Martin Luther and ours spiritual sight. God's faithful Word, which He brought to us just as Jesus brought, brought, brought Bartimaeus to Himself, is one that grants mercy. His answer isn't, do this or do that for me, or even, I will give you this mercy, but first you must then do this for me in response. It is quite wonderfully simply put, what do you want me to do for you? Let that sink in for a moment. That's a question the God of the universe is asking you, a beggar. Then at the request See, finally, Bartimaeus actually asks for something specific only because Jesus has almost pushed him to it. After Jesus urges him, he helps us voice our need just as he helps Bartimaeus voice his. Save me from the darkness. Save me from my blindness. Reveal the truth to me. And we hear the voice say, your faith has saved you. In other words, the thing that Luther was missing and was revealed to him from God's Word is God's response to the beggar and the beggar's cry for mercy. It is met with mercy and love freely given. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Your faith has saved you. I have had mercy on you, he says. Dear friends in Christ, You have received God's mercy, not because of anything you've done, not because you asked for it, not because of the good things you've done in His name since He gave you this gift, but simply because He has had mercy on you. He has forgiven you your sins, no conditions, no expectations, just mercy. Martin Luther's final words, we are beggars, that is true. They are true. Yet, because God revealed to him and to Bartimaeus and to you the truth of Jesus, they are no longer words of despair, but words of hope. They are words that point to what God has revealed to us in Jesus, that He loves us and has had mercy on blind beggars like us, like Bartimaeus, like Martin Luther like all those who cry out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Say it with me one more time. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. He does, He has, and He always will. In the name of Jesus, amen.